Hello, and welcome to ICSCS Alpha Part 1 stream. It's great to see all of you here in the second ICSCS stream. The first one showcases the architecture and the bare bones of the facility, as well as the startup feature. First of all, I wanted to apologize for the slow development of the update. It's hard working on a one-man project, and my motivation to work on the update went downhill back then. However, development is slowly catching up, and I am really excited to show you what I have been doing. But that's also only the beginning, since there's still a lot of things left to do till the full release of ICSCS. Now you probably saw me uploading videos with the underscore at the beginning of every video name. They're actually sneak peeks of what's going to be in Alpha Part 1. If you take a look at the sneak peek before the startup task sneak peek, it's supposed to be released somewhere between quarter 1 and quarter 2. However, it's delayed between quarter 3 and quarter 4 due to the lack of motivation. But now that I have enough features complete to show you, let's get right into it. Let's start off with the architecture. The architecture has been updated from pre-alpha in this version. Basically, there are new areas to explore and interact with, as well as areas that were inaccessible in pre-alpha, now accessible to every player. This includes the new top site, as well as many new areas to go to, like the loading area in the parking lot and such. There's also areas that are now interactable, like the material cave. There's a lot to explore here. Anyways, why not we take a look at the architecture of the upcoming Alpha Part 1 update. I'm really excited to show it to all of you. Take a look. Here is the brand new top site. You may have seen this in a day and night sneak peek, but I didn't tell much about it yet. It serves as a surface level for ICSCS with rooms to explore, as well as elevators so that you can go down towards sub-level 1. However, I'm not going to jump directly to sub-level 1 just yet. Anyways, let's explore the top side. Here's the cafeteria, also known as the internal cafe, but at the top side, I believe that people didn't want to go all the way down to sub-level 1 just to eat or go from sub-level 1 to eat at the internal cafe and then go back down. So that's why the internal cafe is also at the top side. It will reduce the hassle of players wanting to eat in the first place. Here's the merch store. You can buy my merch here. Sadly, there's no Internal Corporation merch at the moment as Internal Corporation already merged back in 2020, so I do not see any point for that. But if there's popular demand, I might consider it. There's two merch doors in the facility as well. I'm not going to look at the restrooms as I do not feel like there's anything interesting in there. Now, let's go down to sub level 1 since there's something new I wanted to show you. Before I show you that new thing, I wanted to show you an expansion that I did to Sub-Level 1's merch store. 
This merch store is larger than the top site's merch store, which means that it can store more merch here. There's also hoodies as well, instead of only shirts. There's also gag related hoodies as well. My personal favorite is the one saying, Why is the reactor a brick? This is the loading area. This is where trucks can go into the loading area, where they can deliver supplies in the facility. There's also the recycling area, where employees can empty trash cans and recycle them here. There's a door in both the left and right sides of the station, as well as the three other stations in the facility. The reason for this is to make way for the hallways so you can travel between stations without waiting for the transit. Personally, I would wait for the transit instead of using the hallways. You'll see why later. Oh look, here's the transit. This is the all new transit for ICSCS. It has a brand new design, as well as announcement sounds. The old transit was an experiment to see if I can curve the transit, and it worked. After that, I decided to redesign the transit. Anyways, off the station beta, we go. Here we are, the main part of the facility. I'm not going to go over the areas I already showcased in the first ICSS stream, so I'm going to show you the new areas as well as updated areas. This is the security offices. If you have played the pre-alpha version of ICSCS, you may notice that the security offices are coming to alpha. However, this update features it. On the left is the surveillance room. Nothing much is in here at the moment, but I had to delay the camera feature to alpha part 2. My apologies because I kind of forgotten about this room during the development of alpha part 1. 
On the right, there's two rooms. On the left of this hallway is the armory. This is where security members can collect their weapons. However, the weapons won't be what you think. You'll see why later. On the right is the holding cells. Right now, it's a decoration area. Now, let's go to sub-level 5 because there's a new area I wanted to show you. This is the coolant filtration area. It has two coolant filters that are responsible for filtering out any debris from the coolant coming from the coolant tanks before making its way to the stabilized black hole reactor Mark II. Anyways, let's head on down to sub-level 6. The material cave got an update. There's a combination of metal and crystal scattered around the cave. I'll get back to the material cave later, but for now, this is what it looks like in the next update. This is the maintenance storage room. There's two in the facility which are both located in sub-level 5 and 6. Anyways, maintenance workers can come in here to grab their things. Hazmat and showers also got updated as well. With this time, there's a new room where you can grab your hazmat suit. You can also change back to your original clothes if you want. Anyways, let's go to the area that you have been waiting for. This is the chamber, housing the stabilized black hole reactor Mark II. This is by far the largest area in the game. Since you have seen the chamber already, there's something in the stabilized black hole reactor Mark II as well. Let's take a look. This is what's inside the stabilized black hole reactor Mark II. It has a place where you can store your containers inside. 
However, I'll get back to the containers part later. Anyways, what if I tell you this is not the only inside of the stabilized black hole reactor Mark II? Let's head to the upper structure of the stabilized black hole reactor Mark II. And here we are, the upper structure of the stabilized black hole reactor Mark II. It's kind of similar to the bottom structure at some parts, but some things look different in the upper structure. Nothing much to say about it, but these two areas play an important role in starting up the stabilized black hole reactor Mark II. And that's the architecture for you. From updated areas to new areas, it gives players more areas to explore in ICSCS. I can't wait for you guys to take a look at those new areas in the next update of ICSCS. Now, let's talk about the user interface. In the pre-alpha version of ICSCS, most, if not, some of the UIs aren't in the game yet. However, in Alpha Part 1, they're all finally done and ready, so you can explore all of the UIs that didn't manage to make it in the pre-alpha version. And of course, how about I show you the new UIs? I'm not going to take a look at the UIs that already existed, but rather the new ones. Let's take a look. Nothing much has changed in the loading screen and the intro, but the loading screen is slightly changed so it shows an alpha notice. One noticeable change upon joining is the playlist itself. Here you have occupations as well as your reputation. I'll get back to the occupations part later, but for now, let's get back to the menu. Even though the menu still looks the same, there's also new interfaces as well. Let's head over to the first one, which is options. Here, you can change the options for the gameplay, UI, audio, as well as other settings. In the gameplay options, you can enable or disable the cutscenes, low detail, as well as change the spawn location. The cutscenes option is straightforward, it disables all of the cutscenes except for the introduction, for newcomers. Next up is the low detail, where you can disable unnecessary details such as decorations and such. However, I do not recommend it, unless you have a low end device. The last option in the gameplay segment of the options is the spawn location. You can choose where you want to spawn from the top side to sub level 6. In the UI options, you can change the theme of your UI, whether you prefer it light, dark, or you wanted to customize your UI color, it's all up to you. At the left side of the text, you can see previews of the UI themes before applying it. For example, if you type in 255.00 in the custom theme, it shows what your UI will look like when you click apply. For the sake of this stream, I'm going to demonstrate it to you. Okay, in all seriousness, if customization is a thing, feel free to use the custom themes option. Here's the audio options. You can enable or disable announcements, background music, and sound effects. Nothing much in audio options though, so let's move on. Here we have the other options. There's the 24 hour time system, which you can enable if you prefer that type of time format. Nothing much to say though. Anyways, let's go back to the menu. Here we have the about UI. There's nothing special about it, it's just a detail about what ICSCS is about. However, those two UIs are not the only ones in ICSCS Alpha Part 1. Let's get into the game. Hello, and welcome to the internal co 
Corporation Singularity Containment Site. I'm Dr. Hebbin, the founder of Internal Corporation. It's a pleasure to have you here. Located 4,500 feet below the surface, this facility houses the stabilized black hole reactor Mark II, where you can manage and perform maintenance on. Succeeding the failed Mark I, the Mark II is more efficient than its predecessor. As a new journey of your career comes to a start, you're assigned to maintain this facility. The trip to your new job begins here, and we wish you a good luck to you. Have a good job and report your experience if you have any questions or issues. Right off the bat, there's a daily reward system. The daily rewards are split into 5 days. So if you want to get all 5 days in the login streak, feel free to come back often into this game. So when you click the claim reward button, you will receive an amount of cash. I received 225 cash since it's my first day. Even though it said 200, well, it's a spoiler, I can't even tell you till later in the stream. However. The days will increase every time you claim your reward. If you noticed, there's four new buttons at the right side of the screen, except that one of it isn't functional at the moment. This is a notifications UI. I have completely reworked the notifications UI, so you can cycle through past notifications as well as notifications that you missed or accidentally closed on. This is the minimap UI. You can find your way around the facility using the minimap. Considering that some of the feedback I got said that they got lost in the facility trying to find the control room. This is the status UI. In here, you can view your hunger and energy. When your hunger is low, you'll lose your energy much quicker. However, you can't do much with low energy. This includes sprinting as well as other things that require your energy. Remember how I said that I would take the transit instead? There's a reason why. About the effects, that's coming in a future update. Now, I'm going to show you a feature that is only exclusive to visitors. This is the Areas Discovered UI, exclusive only to visitors. As a visitor, you are meant to explore the facility, so I decided to implement the Areas Discovered feature you can check back at any time to see which areas have you discovered, and if you manage to discover all of the areas, you will get a badge. Now, let's head into the in-game menu. Before I do, the in-game menu UI is changed a little, so it displays the time and how much cash you got. About the cash thing, it's a spoiler for now. My bad. If you recall, the stats, tasks, and Occupation UI isn't in the pre-alpha release. However, in the upcoming Alpha Part 1 update, the UIs are now in the upcoming update. Let's look at them one by one. Here we have the stats. It displays your name with your Roblox avatar, as well as when you first joined, as well as the number of tasks you completed. There's also occupation levels as well. Think of it as a skill level in that particular occupation. The maximum level is 5, which means you mastered that occupation. Over here, in the more stats, you can see how long have you played the game, the badges you earned, your most played occupation, your total cash earned, and the meltdowns you have experienced, in which I will come back to that in the future. This is the task UI. In here, you can view your tasks, as well as tasks that everyone can do. I'll explain the task later in the presentation, but for now, here's what it looks like. Since I'm just a visitor, there are no tasks for me. This is the Occupations UI. You can switch your occupation here, whether if you want it to be just an ordinary visitor or an employee that helps out on stuff and much more. But be careful, once you switch teams, you'll lose all of your items to prevent any abuse. And that's it for the user interface. There's much more user interfaces in this update, 
so that the game feels more complete. There will be more in the future, as ICSCS works its way from pre-alpha all the way through the full release. So, what do you think? The UI update is a large one, but not the largest feature that I have showcased for this update. Anyways, there's also some updates to the SPHR Mark II as well. Previously in pre-alpha, the only thing to do with the SPHR Mark II is to start it up or control its power lasers. This update also adds more features to the SPHR Mark II, so it's not only for starting up and controlling the lasers. Take a look. So, the stabilized black hole reactor Mark II isn't started up at the moment, mainly because we haven't inserted any containers yet. So let's do that right now. If you're wondering where do you get the containers, well, you'll see later in the stream. So you thought that you're done, right? Wrong! We only inserted half of the containers required to start up the stabilized black hole reactor Mark II. Remember the upper structure? So let's head up there. There are two maintenance elevators in the SBHR Mark II chamber. Both of them are at the left and right of the structure. Let's head into the elevator that is the closest to me. Here we are, the upper structure of the SBHR Mark II. Now we can completely insert all the containers. We're finally done with step 1. The next step is to depressurize the chamber. So let's head over to the control room, so we can depressurize the chamber. Also, the depressurization process can also damage people in the chamber without a hazmat suit. So I'd recommend you to exit the chamber once step 1 is complete in the startup task. Now finally, we can start up the SPHR Mark II. I know that the startup task is that long, but it's rewarding since when you start up the SBHR Mark II, you will get a badge. Anyways, let's prime the startup and start up the SBHR Mark II. Stabilized Black Hole Mark II startup has been primed. Please prepare to exit the chamber immediately. Stabilized Black Hole Reactor Mark II startup sequence initiated. Please make your way to the outside of the reactor chamber. Formation Laser Alpha. Calibrating Formation Laser Beta. Formation Laser Alpha Calibrating. Alpha, Beta, 
So that's the new startup task for the SBHR Mark II. As you can see, all of the UIs are now available. However, that's not the only thing new about the SBHR Mark II. Let's say that once I set all of the laser powers to 6 and wait for a while, You can now see the status of the power lasers beginning to degrade. Due to the power level of the power lasers, the SBHR containers are trying their hardest to put in that much power to the power lasers, and they will degrade quickly due to that. And once a container goes bad, maintenance mode can be activated. Which brings us to a new feature about the SBHR Mark II, maintenance mode. This turns off all the power lasers, so that makes it safe to replace the containers. Like I previously said, I'll tell you how to get new containers later in the street. But for now, keep an eye out for it. And that's the changes that I did to the stabilized black hole reactor Mark II. It's no longer a reactor where you can only control the power lasers. I know, nothing much has changed to the stabilized black hole reactor Mark II, because I'm focusing more on other things rather than just the reactor. Anyways, this next feature I'm going to show is a little bit smaller than the UI update, as well as the new features for the stabilized black hole reactor and more. And I'm going to continue what I mentioned during the UI showcase, and that is the hunger and energy system. You may be wondering, how do you feel your hunger and energy? Well, this brings us to a new feature. It's called food and drinks. So how do you get food and drinks? Well, you may have noticed vending machines scattered across the facility. You might think that they're just decorations, but in reality, they're actually helpful for refilling your hunger and energy. However, they're just only snacks on the go, so it won't do much. If you wanted something that refills your hunger by a lot, feel free to stop by either one of the two internal cafes. However, to get food and drinks, you need cash. And no, I do not mean real life cash, I mean in-game cash. I'll talk about how to get in-game cash later in the stream. Anyways, let's talk about the energy system. Unlike the hunger system, it's easier to restore your energy, either by drinking a drink from the vending machine or sleeping in the living quarters. Drinking a drink won't do much, but sleeping in the living quarters will actually refill your energy a lot more. There's a prompt so that you can sleep on a bed. To wake up, you can simply press space. However, ICSCS is not supported on mobile yet due to the controls, but hopefully in the next update, there will be mobile support. Anyways, let's order food. 
So I walk up to the cashier and I talk to her. Here, you can select between sides, main courses, desserts, and drinks. I'm craving some spaghetti, so let's order... Wait, there's a new type of spaghetti? Let's try it. As you can see, my spaghetti is currently being cooked at the moment. Do not worry if your hunger is draining, because it drains slowly, unless you sprint, which I wouldn't recommend. Oh look, my spaghetti is ready. You can now enjoy your food. Bon appetit! As you can see, my hunger went up higher than the food you get from the vending machines. It's perfect if you're on sub-level or the top side, since the internal cafes are located in both of these levels. However, if you're in sub-level 2, 5, or 6, maybe you can stick with vending machine items for now, till you decide to take a break and head towards the internal cafe. Do keep in mind that the internal cafe only opens from 7am to 9pm. I'm really excited for this feature coming in Alpha Part 1, not only because it gives a bit of a challenge, but it also gives you a bit more fun that way, as well as more playability. I didn't want people to just simply stand still in one area, just to wait for a reactor to melt, for example. Also off topic, but you may notice moving NPCs in the intro of this stream. Well, you may be wondering, they must be fake. Actually, they're not. This is a minor to major feature that is coming to the alpha version of ICSCS. The minor part is that they are background NPCs that can move, use the elevators, eat at one of the two internal cafes, etc. There are five types of NPCs, visitor, employee, maintenance, security, and there's the last one that I didn't want to reveal just yet, till later in the stream. Only up to 50 can spawn at the moment as I didn't want the game to lag due to too many moving NPCs. Anyways, back on topic. This next feature is also a major feature, and the biggest feature coming to Alpha Part 1. Not only the feature I mentioned is large, it also plays an important role in this facility. To me, there should be a lot more interactivity in this game, considering how I wanted the game to go. It's rare to see core games have that much interactivity, so instead of players waiting in the control room, players can now do something other than that. Introducing Occupations. It's a feature that I mentioned during the UI overview, but I didn't show it to you yet. Now that's over with, I'm really excited to showcase this feature to all of you. Now, I know that there are facilities that did the same thing, but for this occupation system, I did it in my own take. And of course, I would love to show you a demo of the Occupations feature. Take a look. So here is the UI itself. I didn't showcase its function yet, so let's get right to it. Here we have 4 occupations to choose from, visitors, employees, maintenance, and security. And no, you do not need to join a group to access either of them, because to me, I do not like locking a feature behind a group, because I wanted to give players more playability without having to join my group. Anyways, let's start off with the first occupation, visitors. In this occupation, you're an ordinary visitor exploring the facility. Remember that there's an areas discovered feature that's only accessible to visitors. This occupation is perfect for new players that wanted to study the facility itself before trying out other occupations, such as the employees, maintenance, and security. Remember the occupations level feature I mentioned? The visitors occupation will be the easiest occupation to level up in, since once you discovered every area, you'll automatically be level 5. 
The next occupation is called employees, which gives more benefits than visitors. In this occupation, you are a staff member of this facility, and your goal is to interact and help NPCs around the facility. For example, a visitor got lost, and you have to guide them back to the tow guide. Or maybe they also lost their visitor card, which is an item visitors will need to have when visiting the facility. Without it, visitors will have to pay a fine of 200 cash. Not only visitors needed help, but also employees as well. Employee NPCs can also lose their employee card, mainly in sub-level 2. If you try to interact with an NPC that has a problem as a visitor, it won't work, unless you switch to the employee's occupation. The third occupation is called Maintenance. It's really different from the employee's occupation, because instead of helping NPCs, you're tasked with fixing things, such as fuse boxes and coolant filters. However, in order to perform repairs, you, of course, needed a wrench. Then, you can begin fixing, as so as you thought. You also need a spare wrench in order to perform the repair as well. It's like an additional challenge, so after you grab your wrench from the maintenance office, do not forget to grab a spare part as well. You will need one, but be sure to select the correct spare part before heading to a broken object. The last occupation is called Security. It's really different from the security occupation you see in almost core games that has that occupation. Because instead of abusing your weapons and causing some chaos to happen, your task is to make sure that the reactor is in the stable temperatures, as well as protecting the facility. But what can they protect? Well, you'll see soon in the stream. Right now, it's a new feature that I can't talk about till later. Because personally, that's what makes it stand out from the rest of the core games that has a security occupation. Anyways, since I already mentioned about those occupations, you haven't seen the gameplay of them yet. Of course, why would I mention them without showcasing the gameplay of each of those occupations? I have been working really hard on what you can do when you are in an occupation, so I'm really excited to show you the gameplay of each and every one of them. Here we are at the top side, as a visitor. Usually, in every core game that I have seen, I do not see anything that visitors can do other than walk around the facility. But now, you can actually do something. With the new exploration feature, you can unlock the info of an area once it discovered it. Although it's technically walking around the facility, you can also get a badge once it unlocked every area info. And of course, this feature isn't complete yet. There will be more areas in future updates of ICSCS. But for now, there's only 15 area infos to unlock. So I'd recommend playing the game earlier and try to obtain the badge before the badge gets harder to obtain as more areas are being added in future updates. And now, onto the next occupation. Employees. This occupation is for those who wanted to help around the facility. In every staff occupation, there will be occupation tasks and player tasks. The occupation task depends on your occupation, of course and you can get a player task when you interact with an NPC that has a problem. If you do not like an occupation task you have been given, you can also cancel an occupation task, so you'll get another one that you might feel more comfortable doing. Now, how about performing a task? For example, there's someone that wanted help, and I'm standing in front of him. You can simply walk up to him and talk to him. This, vid this visitor seems to be lost while exploring the facility alone, so we need to guide him back to his tour group. You can either accept the task or decline the task. I'll accept the task for the sake of this gameplay demo. The tour group will always be at sub-level 1, but this visitor thought it's a good idea to explore below sub-level 1, even though the sub-level is off-limits to visitors. Oh, and there's one thing I've forgotten to mention, and that is you can cancel your ongoing player task. If you do, you will lose reputation, so I'd recommend against it on cancelling player task, unless your goal is to lose your reputation as much as possible, then go ahead.
Anyways, I found a toy group. The visitor thanks you before heading back to his toy group. You will gain reputation, as well as experience points to employees level. You can also gain extra experience points if you complete an occupation task. And yeah, the occupation tasks are optional, so you won't have to take it as an important task. There's also other tasks to do as well, such as returning lost items and emptying a trash can. But that's it for now. In future updates, there'll be more tasks coming to the game, so please look forward to that. One last thing to add before moving on to another occupation is that you will get a paycheck every time the facility closes for visitors, so I'd recommend you to stay in the game so that you can collect your paycheck. You can increase your paycheck by completing more tasks given by NPCs and such, but that doesn't only involve employees, it also involves other occupations as well. Cycle through occupations at any time. Wow, that's a lot to talk about the employee's occupation. But I gotta move on to the maintenance occupation right now. The maintenance occupation is very different from the employee occupation. Mainly, the employee's occupation is all about helping people. However, the maintenance occupation is, like the name of the occupation says, is about performing maintenances. You also get access to the occupation tasks, but this time with different tasks specifically for the maintenance occupation. So what maintenance tasks can you do, you might ask? Well, as stated earlier in the introduction to occupations, you can repair objects that are problematic. Here's a broken fuse box for example. I have my wrench ready, so you can repair the fuse box. How convenient. Oh, it looks like I can't repair it. Here's the reason. If you have noticed, in order to perform it, it requires a spare part. I'll be back, but I didn't want you to wait for a while for me to come back, so I am going to skip to the part where I'm back with a spare part. Anyways, I'm back, but this time, I finally got the spare part. Now, let's repair the fuse box. If you have guessed that you have to wait for the repair to finish, you're wrong. This time, I drew in the challenge where you have to press the keys that show up on your screen. The more keys you press, the higher the success of your repairing will be. When your maintenance level is 1, it will be relatively easy to press the keys, since you have time to press them. However, as you level your maintenance level up, it will progressively be more difficult, as the keys that show up on your screen will disappear much quicker. But that's okay, since if you have worked in the maintenance occupation for long enough, you'll get used to it, and your reaction time will be faster so it should be easier for you that way. However, fuse boxes aren't the only objects that can break. The electrical boxes, the coolant pumps, the coolant filters could break as well. Sometimes there will be a leak at one of the coolant pipes in the reactor chamber. Anyways, that's not the only thing you can do while being in the maintenance occupation. You may have noticed a workbench in each of the maintenance storages. So you may be wondering, what can you craft? You can craft things like spare parts for example. All you need are required items like metal, crystal, etc. For example, I wanted to craft a SPHR container, so I need metal and a crystal. There's four ways you can get it. The first one is the easiest, because all it takes is only collecting it from the storage closet in just a single prompt trigger. However, as time goes on, you will eventually run out of storage for that specific item. Which brings us to the second way. This is the material cave. You can get crystals and metals from this area. However, in order to do that, you need a pickaxe to get them. They can be found near the entrance of the material cave. For example, let's mine metal. As you can see, it functions similarly to the maintenance feature, but instead of the number of presses deciding your success, you can speed up the mining process by only pressing the keys. Once you press enough keys, the mining process will be completed, and the metal will appear in your inventory. You can take it back to the maintenance office to craft something with it.
or you can simply restock the storage with it for others to use. But be careful, they are falling stalactites that can hurt you while you are in the material cave. However, not everyone wants to mine for materials. Let's say that you wanted to craft a replacement mainboard, but you are not in level 2 of the maintenance occupation yet. Or you didn't want to go mining in the material cave. What can you do? You may have noticed that you can order the spare part online when you do not have a spare part with you when they try to do maintenance, but there's no way to order spare parts online. But now you can. I have been working on an operating system for ICSCS, and it can be accessed on every computer in the facility. It's also more than just an operating system for ordering spare parts as well. I would like to introduce... Columns OS. Columns OS is an operating system designed specifically for ICSCS. However, you might say you could have called it Singularity OS or whatever. Well, to me, it feels weird for a company to create their own operating system while maintaining a facility at the same time. So I gotta introduce you guys to Focal Point. Focal Point is a company that develops Columns OS, and together with internal cooperation, they partnered to install Columns OS on every computer in the facility. Although the computers have internal corporation branding on it, the truth is they partnered with a computer company to create lots of custom built computers for this facility. But that's not important right now, so let's dive deep into Columns OS. This is the desktop. There's nothing much to see here at the moment, but there will be more things added to this OS in future updates of ICSCS. But for now, it's just only an operating system where you can personalize and browse the internet. And no, I did not mean that you can browse the entire internet and type in roblox.com or whatever. Anyways, I'm going to show you the features of this operating system. Here is the personalization app. You can personalize your desktop background, your taskbar color, as well as the window color. There's three themes right now, light, dark, and custom. So for example, if you wanted to change the theme from light to dark to suit your eyes better, you can. However, like the UI theme that you have seen in the option features of this game, you can make your own theme. Let's say that I wanted my taskbar color and windows color to be red, and I also wanted to set a custom desktop background so I can just simply type in the RGB value of both my taskbar color and window color and paste in the image ID of my desired background into the custom background text box and you can see that it automatically updates the preview. You can review your preview before you click on apply so you won't make any mistakes while making your own custom theme. As you can see, your custom theme has been applied to the OS itself but I went ahead and added an extra detail. Here's how it works. So let's say that I wanted to shut down the OS. But then, I changed my mind and I wanted to use the OS again. So I hop back onto the computer, Columns OS automatically starts up, even if you did not trigger the prompt. And we are back in Columns OS. As you can see, the theme is what I previously left it as. This also applies for every computer. So all of the computers will have the default theme in every new server creation. Anyways, before we get back on track, this OS is not just for ordering spare parts. It's also where you can look at reviews of this place. Also yeah, I forgot to mention, there will be a new review if you cancel or complete a task. Like for example, if you completed a task, the person that you helped will actually leave a review on the site with an upvote. Anyways, if you want to refresh the page, you can simply click on the refresh button. Or if you want to return to home, you can simply click on the home button. Let's go back to home, so we can get back on track. Okay, so where were we? Oh yeah, I forgotten to demonstrate the third way to obtain spare parts. So like I previously mentioned, I'm going to order a replacement mainboard. And of course, they're not selling SPHR containers, because why would a third-party manufacturer make SPHR containers for the SPHR Mark II, right? So, you're given two things to choose, your shipping quality and the shipment quantity. I'd recommend picking the one that is the most reliable, otherwise your order might fail. So I'm going to pick the shipping company. For the shipment quantity, I'm going with 5 crates. 
That bumps up the price to 200 cash. Well, since I can afford it, I'm going to click on place order. There, now my order has been placed. If you want, you can continue shopping or you can wait for your order. However, what if you wanted to order on something else? I can simply go back and it takes me back to the store page. Let's say that I wanted to order fuse blocks this time. And this time, I wanted just only 3 crates and I wanted to try out a new shipping company. So let's go for the second best rated shipping company and select 3 crates. Then I can click on place order. And as you can see, your order will be on its way to the facility. Basically, I ordered 2 times to this facility. However, there's a limit of 3 orders at a time. So that means there won't be more than 3 orders at a time. You'll have to wait a while till there's an open spot for another order if that happens. Anyways, let's head over to the loading area. In here, there's a screen where you can view the information of the orders. Both of my orders are currently shipping at the moment. I didn't want to bore you with the waiting, so I'm going to skip to the part where the trucks come in. So, my orders have arrived. It plays this animation. And there's a countdown on when the truck will leave the facility. So you better be quick to grab the crates. Well, it's going to be a long walk, so I gotta skip to the part where I finally reach the maintenance storage. So I have my crate equipped, and I am going to restock them. So I walk into the maintenance storage with my crate equipped, and restock the item that I ordered. As you can see, the crate fills up the storage more than individual spare parts. If you have the time and there's no more storage for an item you wanted, feel free to use that way of getting your spare parts. And the last way is to dispose the containers using a container disposal bin that is located near the airlock. You can only dispose bad containers though. In return, depending on how many containers you dispose, you will get materials in return. And that's the maintenance occupation. It's really different from the employee's occupation. So yeah, if maintenance work is your thing, feel free to go with this occupation. And finally, the security occupation. And no, it's not what you're expecting. It's not an occupation where you kill players and abuse weapons. No, this occupation is about protecting the facility as well as maintaining the reactor. There's not much task to do in the security occupation at the moment, but future updates would involve more tasks for the security to perform. Right now, the tasks involve keeping the reactor safe and wait, something's not right. Before we get back into the occupation gameplay, I really wanted to tell you about a new feature, something I haven't mentioned previously. You may be wondering, why am I in the maintenance occupation? Well, there's something I wanted to show you. This is a new feature that is coming to ICSS Alpha. It's not just only earthquakes, but rather a lot more than that. I call this events. The one I'm showing right now is the earthquake event. Basically, an earthquake happens and several things around the facility gets destroyed, such as the fuse boxes and coolant pumps. For maintenance workers, this is an opportunity to repair a lot of things so they can rack up EXPs for themselves. 
Another event I wanted to show relates to the security occupation because you need at least one security member in the server for it to happen. Also, remember the NPC that I said that it's the last one but I didn't mention it yet? Take a look. This is the invasion event. In this event, there will be invaders coming into the facility and wreak havoc around the facility. They can damage fuse boxes, coolant pumps and such, as well as shoot you if you're in their range. However, you might be wondering, how are you gonna kill them? Well, this brings us to the armory. Basically, I'd recommend you to get prepared beforehand in case of an event of an invasion would occur. You just simply have to grab your weapons. For beginners, you'll start off with a handgun, but as you level up in this career, you'll unlock more weapons such as the UZI, shotgun, and AK-47. But that also means that the invasion event will be much harder, as invaders will yield stronger weapons and such. You might think to yourself, maybe I can abuse my weapons on innocent NPCs and players. Not so fast. When you try to shoot a player or an innocent NPC, you'll get a notification that you can't do that. You can only do it to invaders because personally, I do not like PvP and I consider killing players as unfair because players will have to respawn all the way back to their spawn location as well as losing their items in the process. So I got my weapons and the invasion is still going on. So that means I can simply use my weapon and kill the invaders. Be sure to try to kill the invaders before the time runs out because once the time runs out, the invaders will retreat. Anyways, let's kill them. Feel, I finally killed all of the invaders in the facility. As a result, the security team will get a reputation boost. The facility will also get some upvotes in the review site for handling the invasion and stopping it. There's nothing much in this occupation yet other than keeping the reactor safe and stopping invasion at the moment. However, more will come soon in future updates. Wow, what a monster of a feature that is. From NPCs to tasks and such, I gotta consider this feature to be the largest feature I have ever implemented into this update. I can't wait for you guys to try out this feature because overall, this is the feature that took me the most effort to implement. I gotta say, now it's finally over, I can go through things that are a little easier than that. However, I'm not done yet. I only covered most of the features of this update. There's also more features, like small features that I implemented into the update for fun. Here's one of them. This is the private server controls. You can only access it if you're an owner of the private server. Here you can change the logo, brand name, facility name, and the reactor name. So let's say that I wanted my logo to be like this, and my brand and facility name to be like this. And I wanted to name my reactor Don't Luck 2 Died. And as you can see, the preview updates so you can reveal your changes before applying it. 
Let's say that you're like, yep, this is what I wanted, and then you click apply. You can see the changes around the facility. It might lag a bit, considering how many signs it has to change. So yeah, you can have fun with this feature. Maybe record a video about it and post it on YouTube. That is, unless you wanted people to ask for a link to the game itself if you decide to make the title of your video, Burr Core Warp Core, Burr Warp Core Startup. Here, you can teleport to locations. However, I wouldn't recommend it if you're going badge hunting, because if you do, your badges will be disabled. Next up is the admin controls. Basically, you can kick players, ban players, lock the server, and prevent new players from joining. Do not worry about using that feature, because badges will still be available if you use that. Next up is the Add Items to the Inventory control. You can add items to your inventory in case you do not feel like putting in effort to get the items you wanted. This will also disable badges, since using this private server control will result in unfairness. This is the player modifier. You can type in the player username you want it to modify, and then you can change their walk speed, health, max health, and jump power. You can also do it to yourself as well, but be sure to not leave it blank, otherwise your character will die. And the last private server control is the SBHR Mark II controls. Right now, you can only change the temperature at the moment. Of course, that's not all of the private server controls I'm planning. There'll be more coming out in future updates. And if you're wondering, how much will the private service cost? 100 Robux? 250 Robux? Or even 1000 Robux? No, it will cost absolutely free. I really want friends of players to come together into private service so they can all have fun and get together. Another feature that I wanted to talk about is a game pass called Singularity U. What does U stand for in Singularity U? U stands for Unmatch, which means you will be able to get cosmetics relating to the game pass, you'll lose twice as less reputation when cancelling tasks, and a 1.5 times boost to EXP and cash upon completing tasks and getting daily rewards. The price of the game pass is 250 Robux, but the price will increase over time as more perks get added into the game pass as time goes by. So I'd recommend getting the game pass earlier. Anyways, if you're a premium user, you do not need to worry. As Roblox gives out premium payouts, in return, you will get the same things that I mentioned, except with different cosmetics than the one Singularity U gets, and a 0.25 times addition to your boost. So that, if you have premium and Singularity U at the same time, you can get your boost up to 1.75 times. And finally, there will be 20 new badges and 7 new original soundtracks coming to this update. So I wish you the best of luck if you're going to go badge hunting. Also, that wraps it up for the last features coming to this update. It has been 9 months since this update's development started, and I'm finally glad that it's coming to an end. Usually, a team would get it done within 3 months or less, but since this is a one-man project, that's why it took that long. Anyways, let's recap what I have shown you. The new top side and various changes to the architecture itself, new user interfaces, new mechanics for existing features such as the SBHR Mark II, the occupation system, the private server controls feature, etc. And of course, the footage I have shown is not the final product, so there will be changes from time to time. This update can be tested in ICSS Canary with the purchase of a Game Pass for that version starting at only 69 Robux. The price may change over time as new features get added, so please keep that in mind. However, on September 9th, Internal Corporation's 4th year anniversary, there will be a public test session for Alpha Part 1, lasting only 2 hours, before its release around mid-September, depending on the feedback I receive. With all of the features combined, I'm so glad to reveal the name of this update. Since this update is about collaboration and such to maintain a good reputation for the facility as well as performing tasks, this update will now be known as the Synergetic Update. Because I believe with Synergy, where we all cooperate with each other, it should be the driving force of the purpose of the new features 
and gameplay mechanics that is coming in this update. Anyways, I also made a trailer for the update. Take a look. However, this isn't the end of the stream yet, because I got the future of ICSCS development to talk about with you guys, because I believe you're wondering what's next for ICSCS after the update is released. Now, as you may have known, ICSCS will be my last core game that I will ever put out to this community. However, this isn't the end of my journey just yet, as there's a long way to go. There's an update called Alpha Part 2. That I'm really excited to work on. I'm going to tell you what might be in the update. As for this stream right now, the next update is still under planning at the moment. However, I have some things that are actually coming to the next update. The synergetic update is not only an update for players to enjoy, but it also helps build up the next update that I mentioned, as well as future updates that will follow. Now, let's talk about what's coming to Alpha Part 2. If you have remembered, I mentioned about events coming to the Synergetic update. However, in the Synergetic update, there's only two events at the moment. In Alpha Part 2, however, there will be more events introduced. Here's some of them. The first event that I'm going to talk about is Blackout. In this event, the SBHR Mark II will have its power connectivity to the facility disconnected for a while. During that time, you can't see the SBHR Mark II status and such, as well as some of the facility areas. It will be really dark in the facility after a while, till the maintenance team finds the cause of the problem. As a temporary solution, the emergency generators can be used to power up the facility, but I do not recommend using it and having the day act like normal, because eventually, the emergency generators will overload and the facility's power will go down again. The next event is called Vandalism. In this event, a visitor vandalizes something in the facility, and as a security, you need to detain whoever vandalized. There will be clues to identify the visitor in question, and it also poses a challenge that the security team will face. Once you detain the person, they'll be put into a holding cell, so the holding cell won't feel like a decoration room. And finally, the last event that I'm going to introduce is Plague. In this event, a player catches a disease, and you have to either stay away from that person or stop the disease. However, there's no one to stop the disease. Like, there's no choice but to wait for it to tone down. Well, worry not, because there is going to be one more occupation coming to Alpha Part 2, and it will feature a new way to play ICSCS. Take a look. I can see outside of you You're my eyes and ears So take my hand and pull me out And I would like to follow you throughout this place It's really dark in here and I wanna see light don't pull away from me right now You're my singularity That's right, researchers are coming to Alpha Part 2 So you may be wondering, what can researchers do? There's no laboratories or anything like that well, remember how I said that there will be no labs in ICSCS? Well, I actually lied about it because with the direction I wanted the game to go, I really wanted to implement more interactivity for players to do. 
Anyways, the researcher can research a cure for the disease that is happening in ICSCS, and if that said person is the fastest to make a working plague disease for the entire facility, will gain reputation, as well as their paycheck being increased. I plan the lab to be located in sub-level 2, because sub-level 2 as of now is currently feeling empty. There will not be just one lab, there will be multiple labs, spanning across the entire sub-level. Also, that update is focused more on the occupations aspect, while focusing less on the reactor aspect. I really want to get things done before focusing on the reactor, which is for another update. Not only that update focuses on the occupation aspect, it also expands another sub-level, sub-level 1. Right now, sub-level 1 is currently a hallway simulator and there's just barely anything for NPCs to do at that sub-level. However, in Alpha Part 2, there will be new areas to explore in sub-level 1, like display rooms, where visitors can interact with things by pressing a demo button and such. The possibilities are endless. Anyways, before I wrap it up, there's also small additions as well, such as alarms, medkits, as well as an update to Columns OS. At the moment, this plan isn't final, so I hope that you stay tuned about what is to come for Alpha Part 2. Also, with all that said, Alpha Part 2 will be known as the Exploration Update, because I believe players will explore the possibilities or breakthroughs in the all-new researchers' occupation, since researchers are the main focus for that update. Of course, that name is expected to change over time, so this isn't the final name. Alpha Part 2 will be expected to come out somewhere between late December 2022 to the first quarter of 2023, and I can't wait to present it to all of you once it's done. Of course, that update will be a little smaller than Alpha Part 1, but it offers more ways to play ICSCS. Anyways, I'm really proud to push out the Synergetic update later this month. I have been hard at work on it, and it's relieving to see it completed once and for all. I'm not done yet. I have a Q&A session that will be held after the stream, so please do not go anywhere. Anyways, thank you for joining me, and farewell for now, and have a nice day. <sighs> huh? It has been six years since Ivy City was destroyed. Wow. Man, I remember creating my first core game back then. Wow, things were simple. During those days, I actually met a lot of nice people. Wow, I do not think I can see them again. Nowadays, it's toxic and it's filled with low quality reactor games. Sometimes, me making the past is probably better than making something new. Speaking of
Speaking of which, I have a grand finale to work on. I feel like the final update isn't enough for internal corporation computer code. I only had a week to work on that final update, but I think it deserves more. So yeah, here's some footage of what I was working on. Even though I called it the final update, it's not the end yet. But I'm not going to work on this as frequently as ICSCS. I still like working on ICSCS, but I sometimes really want to go with what I love to do. Even though this project is smaller than ICSCS, it's something that makes me happy to work on. I hope you guys didn't go anywhere yet, but yeah, I just have one more thing. So I have been working on this during my free time when I lost motivation to work on ICSCS. This is not just an update for Internal Corporation Computer Core, this is the complete remake of Internal Corporation Computer Core. You may be wondering, hey don't look too, it's 2022, why are you making a computer core instead of a reactor start related game? Well, this is one of my first personal projects on Roblox. I put my heartfelt effort into working on this project because I really miss the golden days of this community. Back when I joined the community in 2016, everything was simple, friendly, and we only had mainframes back then. Ah, the days. Nowadays, it's just toxicity, oversaturation of low quality reactor games, and other things that are making the community fall to its knees. Like for example, I have seen incidents of aspiring groups leaving the community to pursue as a game development studio due to the state of the community right now. But for me, I really want to show how good the community was back in the day. So that's why I sometimes think that remaking the past is better than making something new. Even though no one would want to play an outdated game genre like that, I do have fun working on it. I'm glad to call this my personal project, because I sometimes wanted to do things that makes me happy. Anyways, I started the development of this remake back in late May of 2022, and here we are. Anyways, why not I do a showcase of this facility? I'm really excited to show you what I had been doing behind the scenes. There's nothing much in here yet, but there will be more in the future. Anyways. Here's the spawn area. You might be wondering about the futuristic theme. That's because I decided to situate Internal Corporation Computer Core the grand finale in the year 2029. Here's the cafeteria, also known as Dunkin Donuts. I know its logo hasn't been replaced from the Peachhead logo at the moment, but pretend that the Peachhead logo didn't exist in that logo. Here's the admin control. It has a similar layout to Internal Corporation Computer Core to Final Update's admin control layout, but I remade it entirely. Currently, only the doors, airlock, and elevator work, so that's why the overall status screen is currently still like that.
this is the main thing. Right now, there's nothing to do. Like, you can't enter codes or go into the reactor area. But sadly, I do not plan on doing the reactor just yet. Because there's still some things left to do before I can do it. Nothing much with the grand finale yet, but it'll be smaller than ICSS. Because I do not plan to put in the same interactivity level in the grand finale. It's a personal project that I really wanted to make. You might be wondering what will happen to the current Internal Corporation Computer Core. Well, it will be renamed to Internal Corporation Computer Core Legacy. Since I plan to say goodbye to Internal Corporation Computer Core, the final update, as I replace it with Internal Corporation Computer Core, the grand finale. This revamp will be playable somewhere after Alpha Part 1's release as the first playable version. Finally, I would like to thank you guys for watching the stream. And I also wanted to thank you guys for giving me a moment to talk about the current state of the community and why I wanted to do this project in the first place. Anyways, there will still be a Q&A session after the stream, so feel free to stay here and ask questions. Thank you for joining me, and farewell for now, and have a nice day.